Okay, Leo. Um, the coolest, mind-blowing waste of time probably ever. <laughs> um, I'm not wow, kidding. this must be so, good. Wow. I was a high school freshman in October of 1970 when the oh. October issue of Scientific American came out. And in Martin Gardner's mathematical games column, he introduced the world to John Horton Conway's life. John, also known as Conway's Game of Life. It, okay, what it was, was an incredibly simple cellular uh, automata uh, system. So, and it wasn't the first, but it, it has been, the, it was arguably the best. And so, and, and so here's what that is. You take a, 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 a two dimensional grid like graph paper and, and which is obviously com composed of cells and a cellular automata has rules that define the life and death, the binary state, the onness and offness, the, li the, the living or not living state of individual cells on this grid. And what was, what was so perfect about what Conway did was he defined, and this was what was so fascinating about it, very few rules, just four rules, which were easy to know and memorize and implement that made this thing, which became, was a machine, made it go. So any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors, okay, so, so on, a, on a rectangular grid, you're going to have you know, a single cell will be surrounded by eight neighbors, right? So there's eight cells and, and those are called neighbors, the neighboring cells. Any live cell, any cell that's currently alive with fewer than two live neighbors dies because of loneliness or underpopulation. <laughs> um, any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. So the next iteration. So the way you think of it, you have like, you have the, the current state of the grid and then you, you go through and you, with that state, you determine what the next state will be by go by, by processing every cell to see whether it will be alive or dead in the next, based on these rules in the next update. Okay, so any live cell with two or three neighbors lives on because it's got just enough to be, it's not going to die of loneliness or underpopulation. It's just enough to, be, to stay happy. But any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies from overpopulation. And lastly, any dead cell with pr exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if from reproduction. So so a dead so you create life if you have exactly three live neighbors. So okay, so a couple simple cases. Take a two by two, uh, you have the whole grid clear, a two by two square of cells. So you know, two live cells next to each other and, and, and then immediately below them, two more live cells. So each one of the live cells has its three neighbors. So it gets to live. Yet, because of, in this configuration, none of the dead cells around that block have exactly three neighbors. It's only when you have exactly three neighbors that you get to spontaneously come to life. So, so that is, that's called a block in the terminology and it just sits there. Nothing happens. Generation after generation, there's no birth of cells around it and they don't, then the ones that are alive stay alive because they've got just the proper balance. 
Now take another simple example. This is called, this is known as a blinker. It's three cells in a row. So you got a whole empty grid with three cells in a row that are on. Okay, now the cell in the middle of the three, it's got its two neighbors. So it stays alive. But the cells on the end, they've only got the one neighbor, that middle cell. So that's not enough. They die. Um, looking at the cells surrounding this little set of three, only the two cells above the center and below the center have exactly three neighbors. So that's the birth condition. So what that does is that means in the next generation, the cells on the end die and the cells above and below the center come to life. So in other words, this thing flicks back and forth. It blinks between a, being a little horizontal line and a little vertical line. Okay, so there's the basics. But when you start playing with this thing, oh my goodness, um, there are gliders, which, which are able, to, they're a little five cell configuration that, that, that move diagonally forever. They just fly off the, they fly off the graph. Um, you, there are glider guns, which which are these amazing machines where these these two things move back and forth and bounce into each other, and th through some miracle, per they emit a glider that then s starts moving off the screen di uh, uh, diagonally. Oh, yep, there's a glider gun, and and oh, it's um, there are spaceships which move horizontally. <laughs> there are puffer. There are puffer type breeders that move along, leaving glider guns in their wake. <laughs> and then the glider guns, of course, begin emitting gliders from them. <laughs> you have the notion of the speed of light, because, of course, the speed of light is C in our universe, but it's an iteration. It's the, the, so the speed of light is a grid step, because if you think about it, nothing can pop, nothing in the game of life can move faster than one cell. So then you rate the speed at which gliders glide and and spaceships, there's also spaceships, I forgot to mention, spaceships move in what fraction of C they're able to obtain. Okay, so with all of that background, so, some crazy person, I can't even imagine doing this, built a digital, a fully functional operating digital clock with in, in using this cellular automaton so that you, if so that the, the live cells generate, they generate the digits of the time of day and, and the, it ticks and it, and it has an AM and PM indicator. And it's just like, I mean, when you understand how few and simple the rules are, and the the idea that this is even possible is just it's just mind boggling. So again, I mean, it's got even colons for which, and you can't have a colon. A colon is an unstable body. It it you know a colon will immediately the entire center will it will go extinct. I mean, I I you I played with this enough as a as a kid that I I can look at this and I can tell you what will happen because. You know, <laughs> this is the kind of upbringing I had. But uh, anyway, just I can't a, get an, mine to work. <laughs> and a, just an incredible piece of work. Just incredible. And I have to say, for anyone who's interested, you can find life on every platform that has ever been created. There is probably even a, a, a Nintendo Game Boy version. Certainly you can get it on Android on on iOS and on Windows on every platform. Um, and so if you're curious, just play with it as Leo has been uh, while I've been talking about it because you you obviously found one on a web page, right? Yeah. No, so, well, so I found, just, he actually links in his uh, his, uh, his post on Stack Exchange for Code Golf. He links to a uh, simulator that's a web-based simulator. So you can paste his code into ah. the JavaScript Conway Life simulator. Oh, I forgot to set the generation step to 512. There we go. I clearly, <laughs> clearly got some work to do. Anyway, very cool. Oh, 
just uh, just just a stunning piece of work yeah. again yeah utterly useless but <laughs> fabulous <laughs> Yeah, I've talked to people who uh, actually became researchers in uh, AI because they, uh, you know, started with Conway's life. Oh, Leo, so, it's just, a lot I of mean, people it's did, right? so elegant. You, it's a simple set of rules. It, and, you, and when you look at how rich the result is from those four simple there rules we there we go. That, operate on a, that operate on a grid, look at that thing. <laughs> This is insane. I don't know what kind of uh, amazing uh, oh. cognitive ability this guy has because I, I don't I know, know where you'd go to make this or how you'd figure it out. He doesn't publish the code, does he? He just has the. Uh, it's a big. Oh, it's all. I think it's all there to, to, to be oh, okay. figured. Yeah, to be reverse engineered. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. There's a big binary blob. I mean, you know, numbers. Very wow. cool. I mean, just amazing. Just amazing. Yeah. And utterly useless. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You so he uh, probably spent years of his life. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, but again, hats off. Very Salute, similar to you know? writing, for instance, a general purpose Turing machine in Minecraft. You know, that kind of thing. People yes. have done and that. Turing machines have been written in Game of Life, by the way. Oh, there yeah, of is course. One. Of course. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it is Turing complete. You can solve any problem <laughs> if you have enough little cells. I mean, and and back, you know, I, I was at the AI lab at Stanford in 72 and 73, and with everybody was, you know, you know, implementing in PDP, what was it? PDP 10 code, uh, the like the fastest implementation i've i've thought someday that's well uh, you know i'll take an fpga and do it in hardware i just oh anyway it's just it, it's a perfect piece and so for anyone who has never been exposed to it now you have been i i apologize for the loss of the next several weeks of your life if if it if it if it hooks you uh, it the hook could go deep because boy it's just an amazing recreation and in fact conway had no computers at the time, he did this on a go board. Yeah, I mean, he, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, 